It may take an angel pair, five or six, ten spawns to become good parents. There's a misconception on a lot of people thinking that fish only breed in the water they're born with, which is not really true. The big issue in breeding fish is what does the egg require to be viable? Well, we're talking with Andres Ryan, who's the owner of Bioaquatic, one of the one of the the best selected breeders in the country. He's, well, I don't know about that. You know, say, come on, no, let's just, not get bothered. In my in my hatchery, doing my own thing. Pairs of fish have to learn to take care of their their fry. It may take an angel pair, five or six, ten spawns to become good parents. Huh. If you keep pulling the eggs, they never good. They never become parents. And there is a window where these fish learn to become good parents. And when they're young, for some reason, I don't know what it is, they have to learn how to be parents within a certain time frame of their life. Like two or three spawning. Or maybe more, but what I'm saying within the first year of breeding or two years, okay. of the first yeah. year of breeding, they become parents. In order for a fish to become parents, you may have to suffer and see many spawns go bad. Many huh. spawns not go bad, but hatch, disappear, hatch, disappear, hatch, three babies swim around for a while, disappear. Then, you know, then the process goes back and forth, right? Because these two fish, male and female, have to learn to take care of little ones. Huh. They don't know how to do that. You know, they just have the instinct to learn and the instinct to do it. But they, you know, I've seen, I'm sure you've seen that. You, you've got a pair of fish, they breed, there's a bunch of babies oh, in the yeah. tank. And then suddenly you decide to move a rock, disturb stuff, take another fish out, to come back the next day and the babies are gone. And they, they, they ate their, their own fry. They just, you know, it's the way it is, right? So a lot of people will go and get breeders from somebody else. You get big fish from the wild and you're trying to breed them and it's like, it's not working, right? They're, they're breeding, but they're not taking care of the young and all this stuff. And a lot of times they just, they, they, they don't have the right partner. They don't have the right, you know, conditions and all that stuff. So when you got a baby fish that you grow yourself and you're trying to, to, to get it to become a good parent, you may have to suffer and see many spawns go bad before they become good parents. You may have too much light on there and the fish are too stressed. So they hatch, but then they're too stressed. They eat their fries. So you may have to dim the light. You may have to put more plants. You may have to take some of the fish out if you have a community fish tank. There's a bunch of things that you're going to have to do and try. And that's a trial and error thing. So, and maybe after three spawns, everything's fine. Right. And so uh, it's, it's a, it's a very personal questions in a sense of what do you want to do that's what it comes right. down to right so, yeah. and you may you you may find out that that pair is no good they may never become good parents and then you, you have another pair on the side and they're good parents and you don't know why and it's just well they've learned it differently so it all depends what you want to do if you want to be a commercial thing then you go out there and you pull the eggs and you hatch them and you say screw it i'm going to take them out as soon as they breed and hatch them myself and do the work right so but if you want the joy of seeing a cichlid raise the young and defend it and get their full color and, you know, defend their territories. They might take more than one spawn to get to see that. The best way to breed a pisto is it, 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 there's, two, there's two answers. It's, do you want it to do it because you want fry and just sell them? Or do you want to do it so that you can see the behavior and see their vibrant colors? Right, right, courtship, right. And courtship. What do you want to do, right? So if you want to see courtship, you may have to figure out a way for it to, for them to become good parents and raise their own fry. There's a misconception on a lot of people thinking that fish only breed in the water they're born with, which is not really true. The big issue in breeding fish is what does the egg require to be viable, right? Huh. So you could breed discus in hard water, right? And, right. but the hatching is a different story, right? So they will breed in hard water hot, but the eggs aren't going to hatch and people are out there putting, you know, methylene blue and, you know, all kinds of little concoctions to prevent fungus. But the, the big issue with eggs 
and that happens to Corys and all that kind of stuff, you know, angels, Cory, discus, uh, any kind of soft water fish, sort of soft water, even some of the barbs and all that. The thing that people have to understand is that when you have, let's say just the angelfish, that's an easy one. Angelfish, they breed all the time, right? And people will always wonder, how come all the eggs turn white and all that stuff? And I'm going to put medication on them and stuff like that. And the first question I ask them is, is what kind of water do you have? And most of them are going to say, well, hard water comes out of the tap. And okay, what's the pH? Okay, eight. Okay, uh, what's your hardness? Okay, it's, it's up there, you know, 15 degrees or whatever it is. And then next thing you know, I says, well, that's your problem. It's not, it's not the eggs. It's not the fungus. It's not that. It's the fact that a membrane, the membrane of the eggs, all eggs pretty much, is negatively charged. It's negative because it wants to assimilate food and minerals and all that. It's, it's a breathing membrane, right? There's an exchange between the two. It's not just a seal, like a, like a, you know, and it's, it's a, it's an open membrane. So elements go back and forth, but in order for it to be active, it needs to be negative. So element go towards it, right? So it could be minerals, could be oxygen, could be whatever. So what happened is that if you have hard water and these fish are, are bred, they're, like they, they live in soft water, then there's no calcium in that water. There's other things, but there's no calcium, there's no magnesium. So the first thing that happened is the eggs, the eggs get clogged. So the calcium just start binding to the membrane. That's what makes it turn white. That's what makes it go hazy. And basically the eggs is still alive, but it dies because basically you just sealed it and it's over, right? The, the, the embryo is not gonna make it without huh. oxygen or you know whatever else it needs. So the thing to do is to soften the water, right? So, but you cannot soften it in the middle of the process. So let's say right. your angel fish, let's say your angel fish just laid the eggs and you say, well, I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow. Well, that's too late. So it's mostly like they lay the eggs, you pull the eggs out and then you put them in soft water and then you're okay. But if you wait a couple hours, that's pretty much over. You know, you, some of them are gonna hatch, but the majority are probably not gonna hatch because the calcium is already binded or calcium and magnesium or whatever other minerals you got in there that are positively charged in the water they are gonna go. So that's actually, that's how it works, right? So you can like strip spawn these fish. You know, a lot of, a lot of people can spawn, strip spawn with hormones, but as soon as the fish can be grown in hard water and get all fat and everything else, but then when you're squeezing in the eggs, you put in the eggs directly in soft water, right? So, and then you're good to go, right? So that's, that's usually the key. So that's how I look at it. <laughs> right. His, his store is linked on our uh, fatherfish.fish or bioaquatics.com. Right. And I got a bioaquatics YouTube channel. And then uh, mm -hmm. it's all the same. And then uh, I got a Facebook page too, bioaquatics. It's all that stuff. I got Instagram, bioaquatics, <laughs> same thing. And uh, right, right. You, you've got some nice pictures and videos on there, you know, and uh, Thanks, Andre. You're welcome, Lou. It's always Thanks. good to see Bye you. Guys.